Welcome back to my moment, and I want to thank you for tuning in. You rocking with your boys, stay humble, and we're continuing on with keep on believing. We said Jairus sought out Jesus to have his daughter healed. The crowd pressed in around him, and one lady in the crowd with an issue of blood for 12 years with faith in Jesus reaches out and touches his garment, and she's healed. And all of a sudden, in Jairus' world, time slows down. He's like, yo, Jesus, you know, in his head he's got to be thinking, we really ain't got time for this, man. My daughter, man, she, she's at home and she's dying. We, we really don't have time for, for, for this lady to give this explanation. And th they're stealing time away from, from, from us getting home so that you can heal my daughter. But Jesus heals the woman. And he tells her, go, your faith has made you well. Then we tune in, Mark chapter 5, verse 35. While he was speaking, Jesus, while he was speaking, there came from the ruler's house some who said, your daughter is dead. So some people, while Jesus is still speaking to the woman, some people come and they, they find Jairus and they're like, yo, bro, I'm sorry to tell you, man, but your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any further? And they're like, yo, she's dead. Ain't no sense in troubling him anymore. Just let him go. And just think about how Jairus' world, you know, th this, th this roller coaster of emotions that he's gone through. That first off, he gets to Jesus. He finds him. And then Jesus says, yes, I'll come to your house and heal your daughter. Okay? And Jairus is like, yes, oh my gosh, I know this is going to happen. And then, Arr! Jesus stops and heals this woman and he's talking to her and time is wasting. I'm sure Jairus is like, yo, come on, Jesus, we got to go. And then these men come up and he probably recognized them coming up and sees, oh, oh my gosh, what's happening? And they tell him, I'm sorry, brother, but your daughter has died. She, she's gone. No heartbeat. She's checked out. We're so sorry, brother, but there, there's no reason to to bother the teacher anymore. Just let him go his way. Verse 36. But overhearing what they had said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue. So, so, so Jesus hears what they said and his attention comes right back away from the woman and back to Jairus. I have not forgot about you. Remember what I told you. And man, if that ain't a message from God right now, remember what I spoke to you. Remember what I said to you bring it to pass. His, his attention comes from the woman back over to Jairus. And he says to the ruler of the synagogue, Jesus said, do not fear, only believe. Don't fear. Instead, keep on believing. Keep on believing. And he allowed no one to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. They came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and Jesus saw a great commotion outside, people weeping and wailing loudly. So, so, so we know then this young girl was dead. They had already began the mourning ceremony, the mourning service, oh, she's gone, right? The weeping and wailing had began, verse 39. And when he had entered, he said to them, why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. Huh. So why, are you, why are you doing all this? The child's not dead, but sleeping. And remember, he says this later on about, uh, uh, about his homie Lazarus, right? So, but uh, uh, verse 40, and they laughed at him. Yo, they straight up laughed at him. But he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother, those who were with him, and went with, I'm sorry, and went in where the child was. So here he kicks everybody out of the house. Everybody, get out. And he takes a few disciples and he takes the mother and father with him. And it says, um, he went in where the child was. Taking her, verse 41, taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha Kumai, 
which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. And here's that word again, immediately, the girl got up and began walking. For she was 12 years of age, and they were immediately overcome with amazement. And he strictly charged them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. Once again, we have this uncleanness to cleanness. See, anyone who touched a corpse would be unclean, okay? Jesus touches the corpse and expels the uncleanness. And this is so good. It said, they laughed in his face. The last time Jairus saw his daughter, she was sick. Now she's dead. As his little girl lay there lifeless, he is helpless. All he can do now is trust Christ and keep on believing. So if you're wondering, how do we apply this to launching out in ministry? If you're wondering, how does this fit to launching out and what God is calling us to do? I want to share a quick testimony with you about the trip to Africa when I went to Malawi. I went down and I was praying and asking God, Lord, should I go or should I not go? I didn't have any desire to just go to Africa to just go. I wanted to be doing what God wanted me to do. But I wasn't getting anything. I kept asking, Lord, just tell me, do you want me to go? If you want me to go, I'll go. If you don't, cool. And then the first Sunday in March, I went down to pray with Brother Phil. Uh, one of the elders in my church, Elder Phil Walker. And as I get down, uh, uh, as I get down to the front and we're at the altar, we hold hands and he began to pray for me and I don't even know what he prayed. All of a sudden I got the download from God and he told me to go and he said, go make disciples. When, when that resonated, when that hit me, I knew that was him telling me, go on this trip. And I said, okay, well God, I mean, okay, if you want me to go, I'll go, but like, what about the money? Like, how do we figure out the money end of it? I don't have the money to go. And he said, you have not because you ask not. Make the need known. I said, okay. Okay, God, if that's what you want me to do, I'll do it. But I ask that you would meet the need through the body. I ask that you would do it in such a way that, that, that the body of Christ would just show up. So, Right after I was done praying, I walked to the back and I gave my wife a hug. I sat down to run the music and as soon as I sat down, the fear instantly gripped me. Oh my gosh, you told Brother Phil now you're going to Africa. You told Key now you're going to Africa. But well, what happens if you don't get the money? What happens if it don't come through? What happens if da 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 da? And all these things run through my mind and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe. And then, <laughs> like, like, like in the Gospel of Mark, immediately, right? Immediately, the spirit reminded me, wait, hold up. Who is this from? I just said, you know what, God? I trust you. I believe this is what you said to me. I'm going to trust you. Let's walk this out. Raising money was a scary situation for me. Um, I don't like to ask people for anything. So uh, that was totally foreign. And as it, as it went along, God did this thing, man, in such a way where he came through and then at the end of the trip sort of signed his signature on it. And that's how Farming God's Way came home. That's a story for another day. But I just want to tell you, as you keep on believing, as you just, just, just keep on taking the steps that he's telling you to take, and he'll come through. If he told you to do it, go do it. If he told you to go, go. We need to trust him, man. So I want to encourage you. You're facing these challenges. Remember, Brother Joshua said, challenge is food for champions. Keep on believing. This is your moment.